Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. A few seconds late this morning. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the 5th of December. This is the King's Road broadcast. And we're so wonderfully blessed that the Lord leads you here to listen to the Word because the Word is so very important. And we need to remember that uh, God, He wants to have His way with His people. And He's written in His Word his revealed will for his children and we're going to talk about this today the importance of the Psalms but it really is it's the whole Word of God but just we're going to share about how the Psalms have so invigorated us and helped us to stand in times of great difficulty and trial hallelujah and I just bless God for what he's doing today father I bless you today and worship you I glorify, we glorify you, Lord, together. It's one body of Christ, hallelujah. Father, we, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you, Lord, that you have put in us the understanding and the knowledge that your word is true, hallelujah. It is the truth, hallelujah. And we can learn so much from your revealed word, Lord. This is the rhema. You have revealed to your prophets and to your historians and to your apostles, Lord, hallelujah, to record for us to have today, Lord. You gave it to them by revelation and you, you told them what's right, hallelujah. It's not a dead letter. It's living to those who believe and as the Holy Spirit, Father, reveals to us the meaning for our very life today. To get that revelation, that deep understanding that's contained in your word, Lord, is so vitally important for our walk. And we thank you, Lord, that you put a hunger in us for your word. And to be obedient to your word. And, oh God, I pray you crush the devil. Throw down every witchcraft spell, hex, vex, word, curse, incantation. Anything the devil tries to do, Lord, to drive us away from your word or try to uh, prevent us from reading your word every day. And meditating upon your word, Lord, and receiving your word, the word of truth. Throw down the devil's works, O God, in Jesus' mighty name, by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. <coughs> okay, now, we're going to begin here. It's not just the importance of the Psalms, okay? It's, it's really the whole word of God. But the Psalms we want to share today are Psalms that mean a lot to us because of the things the Lord has brought us through in our walk together and both of our past histories and then how the Lord just awesomely put us together back in 1995 when we met and he, he showed us he's going to be doing some things with us and want us to be together hallelujah he just put us together to bless each other and to learn from each other and grow in grace and all these different things and we're still growing still growing hallelujah after 23 and almost a half year right mm -hmm. praise God we're still growing and and praising God and blessing God all the way through hallelujah I want to begin though here at first in Matthew chapter 4 now this is really going to drive the point home because there are people in this world today who say you don't need to read the Bible okay or they'll say you don't need to you know rely upon the word you need to just go by the Spirit of the Holy Spirit in you and that not everything in the Bible is the Word of God, okay? And That's what they say. That's what they say. Yeah. But I say that's a false belief, okay? And it's harming that individual. It's hurting them severely, okay? And when you tell people that, that harms them. You are doing them a great disservice, okay? When you tell them, when that. you tell them that you don't need the word, right. you don't, you know, it's or not everything. Parts yeah, of it. it's yeah. not true. Yeah, saints, when you look at the history of the church and you look at, especially in the 20th century, okay, the persecution that took place in during the Boxer Rebellion in 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 China, early 1900s, and also when Mao Zedong took over, the communists took over in 1949. Okay. In China, the the Christians in China 
when Hudson Taylor went over with the China Inland Mission in the 1850s, 1860, he went over there and he brought the word of God with him because Hudson Taylor believed the word. Hallelujah. Hudson Taylor relied upon the fruit of the spirit contained in the word to feed his soul to make it through each day. Okay. And Hudson Taylor taught the Chinese the word and they wrote, of course, they wrote in their own script and everything in their language. And the Chinese believers would memorize whole chapters of of the Bible whole chapters okay because they knew the importance of the word but today you have this modern uh, mystical new age kind of thing crept into the church and they say you don't really need the word did Jesus really say that I don't think Jesus said that he just black it out it was caused the Jesus seminar back in the 90s the 1990s and 2000 <coughs> And the Jesus Seminar went through and said, well, Jesus really didn't mean that. He didn't really say that. And they just blacked it out. And you have this mystical movement now where you don't need the Bible. Just listen to the Spirit. Well, let me ask you a question. How do you know that's the Holy Spirit telling you to do that? See, how do you really know? Well, here's how I really know and my wife really knows. And those of us who really love the Word of God, we check it with the Word of right. God. Exactly. See? And if the Holy Spirit is speaking to me, and He is speaking to me, He speaks to my wife. God Almighty speaks to us. We are His children. He'll, he'll speak to you. You can back it up with the Word of God. Right. See? But if it's totally against the Word of God... I don't care how much you want to believe it's the Holy Spirit. Sorry. That's right. It's not the Holy That's Spirit. Right. That's right. Because the Holy Spirit's going to, it's going to, it's going to be in here. It's going to be in here. You're going to know that is the Holy Spirit. And you might say to me, well, John, what about Abraham? He didn't have a Bible. Well, let me tell you what Abraham had. He had the history revealed to him by Noah. Okay. Abraham was 50 years old when Noah died. And Noah told him all the history of the previous generations before. And Abraham recorded it down, okay? And so Abraham passed it on to Isaac, and it was passed on to Jacob. So Abraham did have, you know, a certain understanding of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. You know what? I was reading this morning. Remember me telling you that scripture? And you mentioned Noah. Oh, awesome. <laughs> God saved Noah. Right the eighth person and guess what Amen. noah was a preacher of, of righteousness. righteousness hallelujah a preacher of, of righteousness. righteousness that stuck out Amen. to me when Amen. I read that hallelujah you know what the word of god is so rich the lord speaks to us through his word yes it's his letter to us it is he'll just impress on us to open the bible up to a certain book of the word chapter of the word right and right there maybe you underlined it two years ago maybe you underlined it three years ago and he'll let your eyes just fall right on that thing you underlined <laughs> and he will just speak so totally to our spirit through his <coughs> word that's right people are missing out that have that belief they Amen. are just totally missing out those that dis disregard the word, yeah, they, they, they put it on a lower shelf than the spirit. Right. And no, they're together, saints. They're missing out. They're missing right. out on the richness that God wants his children to That's have. That's right. That's right. Really, you have to know in this hour that that is a character of the false movement, of a false spirit, of the devil. Right. It's, it's not the Lord. It's, it's the false the false. Amen. Hallelujah. People need to know that. I don't care what's being taught today in this new age, finangled kind of deal, Christianity. I don't care what they're teaching. It's false if they're going against the Word of God. And it's false if they're telling people you don't need the Word That's of God. That's right. If we didn't need the Word of God, the Lord would not have put it there for us to have. That's right. Okay? Exactly. It's and, an example. And if, if, go, ahead, go ahead. It's example. It's a rebuke to us at times. It's an encourage, 
encouragement to us at times. It's a comfort. It's a guidance. Did you know the Lord guides us through his word at times? Oh, yeah. All Not the time. Not only all by the time. his Amen. spirit, but in his word, he'll guide us. Amen. Showing us. Oh, hallelujah. What he wants us to do. Oh, man. Hallelujah. Preach it. When you have that alive, vibrant relationship with the Lord, he can speak to you in any way. In the word of God. In nature. He speaks in our spirit, that still, small voice. We have to know the trademarks of the enemy, especially in this hour. And one of those things is downing the Word of God, doing away with the Word of God, saying that the Old Testament doesn't mean anything anymore. It's just the New Testament. Mm -hmm, it's just mm -hmm. those four Gospels. Yeah, that's all that, that matters right now. No. The, did the Lord ever say that? Did he ever say that? No, he talks about the whole counsel right. of God. Right. The whole counsel Hallelujah. of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How are we brought into the fullness of God? Where, why in the world would he say the washing of the word? Right. Washing, washing of water by what? the word. Washing your soul. Yeah. Cleansing you. Why would he say that? Purifying you. You know, the Lord, he always tells us how much the word means. Right. That's right. How important it is. Right. It washes. Hallelujah. If you don't read it, it ain't going to wash you. That's right. Well, a lot of times is when you read it, it convicts. <coughs> That's right. Because it's pinpointing right where a person is. That's getting the stain out. It's that, it's that. Uh, what is it called? The naphtha soap. Yeah. It's getting the, the stain out of there. And believe me, that naphtha soap works better right. than right. anything <laughs> in the world. I just got to tell this little deal. 97 cents a bar. <laughs> you know, I'm a real stickler for getting stains out of clothes. And I will keep on until they are gone. <laughs> and one time I said, Lord, boy, this stuff, this spray is just not doing the trick. That's right. It's just not doing it. Please show me something that will get this totally out. And do you know what? I'm going to just tell you something. I don't know if you know it from past old days, but naphtha was the thing they used. Right. To get stains out of clothes. Right. And do you know that thing is less than a dollar at Walmart? It's a naphtha bar. And you wet the clothes and you rub the naphtha bar on the stain and when you wash it, the and stain And I'm disappears. going to tell you what, <laughs> it works and the stain is gone. Do you know that's what the Lord does with us? And he does it through the word. That's right. So many that's times. Right. That's right. He gets those stains out. That's right. Amen. And you know what? We better not be satisfied to live with any stain. Amen. We child. better have the attitude of... I, I want all of it out. Amen. I want all stains out. I don't even want a remnant of it seen in my life. Just like the way I am with clothes. I do, I do not quit. That's right. Do I? No. Till those stains right. are gone. And you keep coming to the cross every That's day. That's right. You come to the cross. You say, Lord, crucify this old man, Lord. Crucify it. Hallelujah. 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 Now, I want to I share this other little bit. In the, in the Middle Ages, uh, recorded history here of this earth, Middle Ages, back from 400 to like, you know, up to 1200 or whatever. During this period of time in the Middle Ages in Europe, the Roman Church kept the Word of God from the people. They would not let them have it in their own language. It was only in Latin, and the priest read the Word of God. They didn't want the people to have the Word of God. Why? Because the, the devil knows that the Word of God breaks every yoke. Okay, it, it liberates the individual. Hallelujah. It liberates them by the blood of Jesus, by the saving grace of our Almighty God. You don't have to do a ritual. You don't have to do the stations of the cross. You don't have to pray your rosary. You don't have to do all these things to be saved. You have to believe. And you believe by the faith and operation of the Son of God. And so 
when they began, John Huss was one of the first ones, they began to translate the Bible into other languages, okay? I'm telling you right now, the Roman church had a conniption fit. Why? Because people were getting liberated. People were getting free from the chains of Rome, you see? From the chains of the devil. And today, the devil wants to keep people bound in the self-life, okay? Where the Bible teaches us, you deny yourself, you don't do whatever you want to do, okay? You deny yourself, period. That's what the Lord says. Take up your cross and follow me. That's what Jesus says. He reveals that. That might be one of those that the Jesus seminar just blacked it right out of there. You know, Luke chapter 9, daily. Take, take up my cross daily. No, Jesus didn't really say that. See, I mean, no, no. And what were they doing when it says, if you take away... From You're, any part, you are going to receive of this the plagues, word, or if you add to anything, yeah, you're going to receive it there too. I mean, you lose your reward, and then you'll receive of the plagues, and you don't want to do that. You want to believe the word, saints. I'm telling you, I'm going to read this right here. Look <laughs> at the importance in the life of our Savior. Now, here is Jesus Christ, the one who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, God in the flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, tabernacled among us. And the devil comes to him. And when the tempter came to him, verse 3 of chapter 4 of Matthew, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Jesus was hungry. Okay. But he answered and said, It is written. Where is it written? In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Okay. It's written. Jesus said, this is the importance, this is the importance Jesus put on the word. So when people tell you the word's not important, they are lying, okay? They're lying. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, let's get into this other thing. Look, Jesus said this to the devil. What did the devil do? Oh, he couldn't do nothing. Then the devil taketh him up to the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And here's what the devil does with the word. He'll use the word to try to trip you up. Mm -hmm. He'll use the word to try to convince you to go another way than the Holy Spirit in your heart is, trying, is telling you to go. That he's twisting it. He's twisting he's it twisting for his own ends. Right. See, is it going to bring glory to you, what you're doing, or is it going to bring glory to God? See, this this is a, a one. This is one uh, plumb line right here. It's a plumb line. Who's getting the glory? You or God? Oh, man. Well, the devil will always put the inward deal there. He'll turn it back on the moi. Right. So, me, myself, and I. Right. That's what he'll do. He'll put it back on the self. <coughs> and that's when you pretty much know that's that's where it's coming from, too. Because mm -hmm. he's, he's going to veer it back to, well, what if... Uh, How's it going to benefit me? Or what's going to happen to me if I do this? Or It always comes back to right, me. Right, right. He took him up to the pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. And then the devil says, For it is written. See, he'll say that. It is written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. Okay? The devil can quote the Bible. Hey, these Bible thumpers out there and Bible punters and these deniers of the Word of God that you don't need the Bible, they'll stand there, they'll sit there for three minutes and tell you don't need to read the Bible. The Bible is not the whole Word of God, blah, 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 or blah. isn't the Word of isn't God, Isn't the period. Word of God. The Bible is witchcraft. The Bible is poison. All these different things they say. And then they go, in Hebrews chapter 4, <laughs> okay, it proves to you the devil will speak from the Word. Okay. Well, it shows you the, the spirit of confusion that's, right. that's with that deal. It says, so the devil says, for it is written. And now he's quoting out of, out of Psalm 91. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus is almighty God now. He's almighty God in the flesh. What does he do? Slap the devil upside the head in kind of a way. He's kind of, he cuts him halfway through to the, to the tracheal, okay, with this word. 
Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Right. Now the devil's hanging there and his head's about to fall off, okay? Because Jesus is dicing him up with the truth of God's word, okay? And and again, again the devil taketh him up to exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Woo, look at all this shiny stuff. Woo, look at all that gold and silver, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, don't you want all these kingdoms? Oh, Jesus, you see? Yeah, all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. Mm -hmm. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. See, the devil has a God, and it's almighty God. Go ahead, honey. You know what? <laughs> That's the danger in wanting recognition. That's the danger in wanting a reputation. Amen. That's the danger in wanting anything other than the will of God. That's right. right. Wanting the own ideas or the own, you know, people can really pump it up in the brain. And the devil, boy, he's right there, right there helping. Right. You know, these ideas of grandeur. Boy, we have, we've met up with people oh, man. have such ideas of grandeur of what God's going to do with them and this and that. Right. Do you know that is a characteristic of, of the, the devil. devil? It is. Did you know that? Wow. That is a characteristic of the devil. Because that's exactly what he did that made him fall. That's right. He said, I will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many I wills were there? Seven or how many? Five. Five, five I wills. Five I wills. Mm -hmm. And what is it? I will ascend. Yeah. You always know if you're having these thoughts of ascension, <laughs> that ain't coming from God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, those ascension deals aren't coming from and God. And what did our Savior say? He said, take the lowest place. Right. That's why it's opposite. Right. That kind of deal. See, he brought him up to the... How do I know all this? By the word. You see, and I know it by experience. Go ahead. And he brought him up to the highest place. Amen. He didn't bring him to the lowest place, did he? <laughs> Why? Because that's where the Lord and his true people, his true people are supposed to stay there. Right. On the low place. That's right. Now, we ascend into the heavenlies. That's true. That's right. Amen. But it is not like the ascension that the devil will do in the mind. That's and right. that's of ex exaltation right. of self. Right. Exactly what he tempted Jesus with. I mean, he was telling Jesus, go ahead and jump off this deal, this high place here. Right. Your angels would catch you. He wanted Jesus to die. Right. He didn't. And he would have died if he had jumped off. You know? <laughs> he wanted him to die. That's right. He didn't want him to complete his work. That's right. He could do the same thing with any of us if we've got that hook then, right me, there. You said that right there, complete his work. See, the devil knew there was something going on. Okay, he's seen that star. Okay, he knew something was happening. He knew the time was being fulfilled. You know, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman. Okay. And the devil could see this. So he tried to kill Jesus by killing the innocents, right? Herod killed everyone two years and under every male child in Bethlehem. See, but God already had Jesus out of the way, see. See, Protected. And, and, and it's so awesome. And, and so the devil, he sees what happened. But as Jesus here, Jesus was right there. John the Baptist was preaching. You know, the devil was watching from a little rock over there or something. You know, peeking out of a little rock. And trying to see what's going on with John the Baptist eating. And the devil sees the heavens open. And the spirit come down upon Jesus. Right? He saw that. And Jesus went out into the wilderness. So the devil's just following him from rock to rock. You know? And, and, and when Jesus, after 40 days, he was hungry. Here comes the devil. Oh, he's weak now. No, he wasn't weak. Jesus was totally focused and committed on the Father's will. And Jesus was a crucified vessel. See? And that's what he went down the Jordan to show. He's a crucified vessel. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. Of God's all in him and on him, Hallelujah! And he and the devil come and starts tempting Jesus. But see, as the progression goes on, you see it going on and on and on. 
The devil is not getting wiser, okay, in his work. He's getting dumber as he goes. <laughs> because at the end, when he's got Jesus all bound up, okay, they got him all bound up now. His hands are tied. He's being beaten. His facial hair is being pulled out. He's being spit on. And then he goes to that cross and he nails his hands and feet there. And he's, he's in agony. Agony. Boy, he was in great agony before the cross. And the devil sees all this. But see how dumb the devil got? Dumber and dumber. See, why? Because he's in rebellion. He's in rebellion to God. And <coughs> Paul wrote in Second Corinthians, I told you this the other day, if the princes of this world would have known what they were doing, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. See, because when they crucified Jesus, that was it. Death nail to the devil, to all of his power. Hallelujah. Death nail. Bam. Jesus said, I said it yesterday or the day before, I might have said it both days. Jesus said, and right there in Luke chapter 9, verse 1, he's given us power over the devil. Hallelujah. See, and that power comes by his life. You know, a lot of times the enemy will come in while we're <laughs> weak in our physical body amen that's what he did with jesus he was not weak spiritually very strong was jesus through all of it but his physical body was weak it even says that in the words so we have to understand and we have to be on guard about that amen, amen. because a lot of times when we're maybe down physically that's when the enemy will come and try to. You know, he he'll ride. come in because he's a he's a total coward. That guy's a total coward, and that's how he comes in. Amen, amen. Comes in the dark, comes in when we're weak. You know, not when we're strong and you know whatever. Right. But he comes in just like he did with Jesus. All the things with Jesus is an example to us. Oh, hallelujah. So we have to know, you know, Lord, keep me strong. Keep dependent on God for your strength, for your guidance, for everything. And just have that prayer on your heart all the time. Keep me, keep me, Lord, keep me. And the Lord will. He will keep us. Okay, now. Psalm 13. No, Psalm 12. I just turned here. I just fell upon Psalm 12 here. i got to read this. Help, Lord. Okay, Psalm 12. <laughs> Help, Lord. The importance of the Psalms. You're going through something today. I mean, hey, maybe something's going to happen today. You don't know what's going to happen. None of us do. Okay, and you're in position. All of a sudden, you find yourself in a position. Help, Lord. Right? You, you cry out, Help, Lord. Well, that's what David said. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Remember what you just said now. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips. Does it sound like today? Sound like today? With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips. Ooh. And the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said, with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Ooh. Does that sound like the world today? <laughs> Praise God. And then listen to this. For the oppression of the poor. Because the poor are oppressed. For the sighing of the needy. Now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. Whoa. You see how powerful that is? The words of the Lord are pure words. Oh, hallelujah. As silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Ooh. Now, that's powerful, isn't it? Oh, my palms is burning right now. <laughs> Praise God. I'm telling you, man, the word, the word, the word, the word. I know people don't like to hear all that. You know, John, you're so old-fashioned. Well, it's all right. I'll be old-fashioned. 
You go on and be new fashion, okay? If you want to, I'm going to be old fashioned. Because Walking in the, the old word old was path. good for the Lord Jesus. He quoted the word. But see, Jesus went to the heart of the word. That's what pissed off the Pharisees so much. Oh, they were so pissed at Jesus. They were mad at Jesus. Oh, they were foaming at Jesus. I mean, they were dirty dogs, weren't they? Barking all the time. That's what the word says in, in the book of Isaiah, okay? <laughs> they went around barking all the time at Jesus. All right? Uh, That's what they did. Uh, and, and they were a brood of vipers. Boy, I right? tell you what, the word lays it out I mean, there, they were snakes, it? man. And, 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 you know, Jesus, he just, because Jesus brought out the heart, the meaning, the revelation, the understanding, the, the heart of God, the heart of the Father, see? And it just so blessed the poor, the poor. He, he came to the poor and to the needy. You see? Yeah. That's what he did. Oh, I'll read that right there. <laughs> Psalm number two. It says, verse eight, Psalm two, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Oh, hallelujah. See, thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed. God's talking to the kings. Talking to the ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. This is, this is God's call to the rulers of this world today. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. And ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Mm. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that powerful? And what are they that put their trust in him? Blessed. 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 And what are they? Blessed. And what? Blessed. <laughs> totally blessed. Oh. Hallelujah. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm telling you right now, the Lord says, read the Psalms. We've said this before. I, I don't do it like I should. And, but I learned this when I came back to the Lord in 1995. If you read five psalms on the first day of the month and read five psalms every day, you'll read through the whole book of psalms in one month. Hallelujah. And pray that Psalm 119 falls on a Saturday. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. 176 uh, verses. That's an awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the best psalms there is. Mm -hmm. And... The importance of it for our life. I mean, people say they want to walk right. Really, people that are born anew really do want to be pleasing to God. They they do. They do. But the problem is they're not. They're doing it out of their own power and out of their own way, and it's never Can't pleasing. It. It's never pleasing Can't to God. It. It's never pleasing to Him. What pleases God is when we die to self and we bow down before Him and say, "Lord, take me up. Use me where You want to." And then and then we feel the Lord so strong and the presence of God so strong. Lord, use me what you want me to do, Lord. Whatever it is, Father, I want to do it. I want to do it. And you feel the presence of the Lord so strong. And then he tells you, I want you to go clean out all the trash cans over at someone's house or something. Or God, you know, tells you some menial little task to do. All right. Filthy task that he wants you to do. Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, Lord, really? Is that you? You want me to go do that? You know? I mean, I know Mrs. Johnson's basement's all full of mold and stuff, and you want me to go clean it out for her? Well, wait you know. a minute. I'm above that, <laughs> Lord. I'm above that kind of deal right there. I remember a time when the Lord was having us help the <coughs> man, and we were helping him with everything, and we started helping him clean up his place. And I'll never forget it. He had me go in and clean up his trailer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Whoa. That place was so bad, so bad. And as I was cleaning it up, I literally almost vomited. It was so bad. Yeah. But as we did, we were praying, cleaning up all that filth, boy. That's right. All that filth. And got it really, really clean. He had laundry piled up, remember? Yeah. Oh, man. We took all of his laundry. I said, listen, man, we're just going to take all your laundry to town and just do it all, man. Uh, we went and at 6 and 5 in the morning. No, we went at 5 in the morning. Yeah. And to the laundry To mat. the laundry mat. Nobody was there. And we had a truckload of laundry. And, and used every, every 
wash machine Every in double there. loader, triple loader, <laughs> quadruple loader. And I'm telling oh. you right now, I got cussed out because some lady came in and cussed me out because I had all the things full. It was about 50 or $60 worth of laundry mm -hmm. that guy had that just stacked up, stacked up. Yeah. But the Lord did such a work in that guy's life. And, and, uh, you but know. see, he, get, he gave him a chance. This is the deal. He gave him a chance to turn right. from his way. Right. But he was a prideful man. And yeah, pride pride, is such a, pride such a was killer. the killer right yeah, there. It, it is. Pride was the thing that did the guy in. Yeah. That he just, he was prideful till the very, very He couldn't let end. go of it. He couldn't no. let go of the pride. And, mm -mm. and you can pray for people. You can serve people. You can do anything. But until that person really just goes to the Lord and says, forgive me, I repent of pride. I'm a strong-willed, prideful person. And I repent, Lord, please forgive me. And God will forgive anyone who does that. Anyone. Okay? Pride is a killer. And I'm telling you, pride is trying to work in all of us. And no, no, no. We can't go there at all. Mm -mm. You know? Don't give it no place at all. And if you feel that pride rising up in any area, say, God, slay it. Slay it by your word, by the cross. Hallelujah. Slay pride. Hallelujah. Crush it down. You know, we have to know we're nothing Amen. except by the grace of God. And the only anointing that we have in our life is the anointing that God gave us by the Holy Spirit. It's not ours. Hallelujah. And it doesn't come from us either. That's right. That's right. It's, oh, praise it's His It's a Holy gift. Name. Oh, hallelujah. From the Lord. And it's not a gift for us either. It's a gift for Him. That's right. For His work. For his work to be used by him. It's not to say, I'm something. I'm right. anointed. That's right. That's right. I'm this and I'm that. No, what is that? That's pride. pride. It's pride. That's pride. That's right. That's drawing attention I to I don't need the Bible. Who? That's pride. See? Who's that drawing attention to? To self. To self. That's right. So is that of the Lord? We can, you know, answer the question. Is that of the Lord? No. No. See, if you're in a place where... Let's say you, let's say you uh, let's say you go to work one day. This is just a scenario. Go to work one day, and while you're at work, you drive across town. I remember when I grew up, and I grew up down south in a big city, and I used to have to go to work. I'd drive 45 miles to work, so it was all the way across the city, okay, to work back home each day. And I'll tell you this: if something would have happened, and you know, I'd have never been able to get back home, I wouldn't have my Bible with me. You understand? Wouldn't have my word with me my sword okay but i had it in my heart i had it in my mind because i read it and i memorize verses i don't i'm not good at memorizing chapters but i memorize verses those key verses boom boom throughout the scripture that i can draw upon just like that boom boom yeah, in a time of trial and a time of trouble you draw upon that word oh boy the lord just gives you strength and that's you what know he does. you know the lord is with you you, you just he, read it that's right if you, you read, read it, it you're going to get you it know, in your mind, and, and it's going to be in your heart. Hallelujah. Yeah, because the Lord will just bring it up. That's what he does with me. I'm not real good at memorizing stuff. But if you read the Word, if you read it, if you read it, if you read it, and absorb it and <coughs> consume it, then when the time is needed, he'll just bring that to you. Hallelujah. He'll just bring it up in your spirit. That's right. He'll just remind he'll you. Remind you won't you. even be thinking about the Word. Walk across the yard, and all right. of a sudden, bam, yeah, there's a Yeah, he'll verse. remind you of that. And that's what happens. And it's like with anything else. So that should be a real heads up for all of us. It's like anything else. That what you take in. It's going to go out. You're going to eventually. It's going to come out in right. our lives. So if we're taking in good. The word of God and worship and this and that. What's going to show forth in our life. Right. Well if we're taking in stuff of the world. Stuff we shouldn't be taking in even evil looking at evil with our eyes listening to evil what's going to be showing forth out in our life bad things bad things that's right evil here i want to read this psalm 4 hear me when i call O god of my righteousness thou hast enlarged me when i was in distress have mercy upon me and hear my prayer oh hallelujah O oh, ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity 
and seek after leasing Sila. But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Oh, hallelujah. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Hallelujah. What a beautiful word of God, Psalm 4. Just so beautiful. I mean, that just blesses you. Hallelujah. What do the wicked do? It says in the word, they meditate evil when they go to bed, right? And then they rise up to, to go work it out, right? Well, what did David say? Stand in awe and sin not. This is the word of God. It's an admonition to us. Commune with your own heart upon your bed. In other words, meditate upon the Lord. And be still. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, what's your favorite song? Which one do you like the best out of all 150 psalms? What, you, what would you like in the most important one to you? Well, there's several. 27, 91. 27? Mm. Which one do you want to read? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> They call some people call ninety one the, the tribulation psalm. Which one you want? Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Oh hallelujah. The Lord is my light. My light. Hallelujah. And my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. He is the strength of my life. He is, you know what that word means there? A fortified place. A fortified place. A defense. Mm, hallelujah. A stronghold. Stronghold. A hallelujah. fortress. Hallelujah. You know what that means? He surrounds us. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And protects us. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they, guess what? They stumbled and fell. You got an example of that? I got one. Oh. Let me share that. One time. <coughs> We were, the Lord put us in this little community fellowship type place and they were they had some bad beliefs, bad things going on. But anyway, just boil it down to this one little incident. They were trying really hard to get Sharon to compromise on what the Lord had spoken through her, the truth of his word. And she said some things that were absolutely true, but they were trying to get her to compromise. And... When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, this one day this happened, they stumbled and fell. Remember? Because they were trying to get Sharon to compromise, and she just looked at them. She didn't say one word, just looked at them. And that person just started manifesting. Their face contorted, and it was just like, you just couldn't believe it, man. <laughs> I was just going, man. This just, it blew me away, because God is that way. God will absolutely make your enemies fall right before you they don't even they can't even do anything remember that mm -hmm. that was that was a powerful time okay and you've had that happen to you see several times several times amen but what happens they fell they fell they always fall mm -hmm. amen mm -hmm. so shame on us for any times we've been worried right <laughs> amen forgive us lord though a host should encamp against me you ever feel like a host is encamping against you well my heart shall not fear hallelujah 
the war should rise against me. And what does it say the devil's going to do? It? He's going to war against the, the saints, saints. Amen. in this hour. The war. The war. The war. Let's see. The war. The battle. The engagement. The oh, warfare. Man. Amen. You ever feel that? Amen. Every day. Mm -hmm. The war should rise against me. In this in will this. I be confident. Oh, hallelujah. I, we're going to be confident in Confident. That. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. Oh, Lord. Thank you for this verse. Go ahead. Read it that again. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to the behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Oh, hallelujah. Is hallelujah. that the one thing we desire? Oh, I want Let's it to be totally, Let's all ask ourselves totally, that totally. question. I want it to be absolutely 100%. Amen. To dwell in the house of the Lord, yes. to dwell in his presence yes. Yes. all the days of our life. Is to that the one thing we desire? For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Oh, hallelujah. In the secret of his tabernacle, shall he hide me? He shall set me up upon, upon a rock. rock. You oh, see that? Hallelujah. In the time of trouble. You ever been in trouble? <coughs> you ever Many feel times. like the Lord's just got his hand and he just kind of pushes you in the cleft of the rock there? Amen. To protect you from what the enemy is trying to do to you? In the secret of his tabernacle? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We have felt that many times. Amen, amen, And amen. know that to be true many times. Oh, hallelujah, times. hallelujah. And now shall mine head be lifted up Above, above mine enemies, round about. Round about. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto, unto the, the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear, O Lord, when I cry. With my voice. With my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. He says, when his children cry, he will hear. Amen, amen, amen. And he will answer. Amen, that's right, that's right. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord. Will I see? Will I see? Oh, hallelujah. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. Oh, hallelujah. And what does he say? I will never leave you. Nor I will never forsake, forsake you. you. Even in the really hard warfare times, we can still hear that promise. Amen. I will never leave you. Nor forsake nor you. Nor forsake you. Lo, I'm with you always, even, even until unto the, the end, end of the age. Of hallelujah. The age. When my father and my mother forsake me, sometimes family will forsake you when you're really walking the true walk of the Lord. Amen. When you really don't compromise and you stand strong and tall, your family will forsake you if they're not walking right. That's right. That's right. If they're of the worldly mindset, if they're of a softer route, they will forsake you. That's right. When my father and my mother forsake me, then... The Lord will take me up. What does that say? You're not alone even if your family does forsake you. That's right. You're not alone because the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Oh, thank you, Jesus. See there, we cry out for guidance. Let me, let me, ask, let me ask a question, and you answer the question, and you listening answer this question. Does the enemy want to be in the narrow way no okay so where's the safe place the narrow way. the narrow way get it hallelujah see not the broad way that's destruction that's the devil's way destruction jesus's way is narrow right mm -hmm. so stay in the narrow way and your safe 
from the enemy. Read that again. Verse, 20, verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path. Because of mine enemies. Right, because the enemy can't come into that narrow way. Mm -mm. Hallelujah! Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. The same thing with, happened to Jesus. That's right, that's what happened to Jesus. False witnesses. That's right. But, you know, false witnesses they have to give an account that's right in that that's day exactly they didn't right. get by with being a false witness that's right they will give an account to almighty god that's right. and if they don't repent of it they will not be in heaven with the lord jesus christ false witnesses that's right they will go to the pit if they don't repent that's right truly repent that's and right. turn from their wicked ways amen sister Verse 13. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Mm, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. You know, <coughs> I just want to see what this is here. Wait. Okay, waiting. Look patiently. Terry, wait. To wait for or wait upon. To expect. To expect. To expect. So while we're mm. waiting, what are we to do? Expecting. We are expecting the, the Lord answer. is going to move. Hallelujah. And also, while we're waiting, be of good courage. Oh, hallelujah. Be of good courage while we're waiting. And then what? He shall strengthen, strengthen thine, heart. thine heart. Oh, hallelujah. And wait, I say, on the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Now, That's a lot so of God's people are in that mode right now. Amen. Waiting on the Lord. We're in that mode right That's now, exactly waiting right. on the Lord. That's right. And so, what should we be doing? Expecting the Lord to move. Expecting to hear an answer. Right. In the Psalms, it says, where is your God, right? They were telling David, where is your God? Where is your help, right? We've heard that many times. My hope is in the Lord, David said, see? <laughs> and so is my hope. I mean, you look at, the, you study the life of David, and man, he, he really went through it. I mean, he just didn't know it by Samuel and become king with a golden crown in his head, okay? Uh-uh. He went through tribulation. David went through tribulation. 15 years, at least, of tribulation. Or more. I think it was probably more. Because he was 30 years old when they crowned him king in Hebron. So the scholars say he was about 15 or 17 when he was anointed king. So that many years, up to 30, at least 15 years, you know, he was running from Saul and fighting the battles and in harm's way and hungry, thirsty. But God delivered him on every turn. God was with him. David was a king and a priest and a prophet. Hallelujah. He, he wrote all these psalms. These are prophecies. These are wonderful, right from the heart of God, the Holy Spirit and David. Speaking the word, speaking the word. Hallelujah. See, the Holy Spirit was all over David. The Spirit of God came upon him. It's what it says in the word. And he had the Spirit of God. And when you read Psalm 22, it's a suffering servant psalm. It's all talking about Jesus. David experienced that in the spirit. David experienced that in his own life. What you read in Psalm 22. See, And Jesus experienced it not only in the spirit, but in the physical. See, Jesus went all the way. The bulls of Bashan were gnawing on him, you know, see, goring him. And oh, all the things that David wrote about the Lord Jesus and about the sheep. We are like sheep led to the slaughter. That's what it says. Paul quoted it. Paul quotes the Psalms heavily through the book of Romans. And that's one of the verses, Romans 8. We like sheep, you know, we're like sheep led to the slaughter. But it's okay. We are overcomers. That's what Paul said. Hallelujah. That's why Paul could put his head on the chopping block. Hallelujah. Amen. It is so good. God is so good, isn't he? Amen. I'm thankful that the Lord touched this other computer once again <coughs> and finally got the e sword up. It was like. It, it started up, then it just sits there. 
froze. <laughs> froze, 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 and then it starts working. So that's good. Thank you, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, keep us in prayer. That's one of the <coughs> things, you know, we mentioned before when we came back on about the real battles we've been through, and that's one of the things that uh, the enemy attacked was our computer. So be in prayer for us about a new computer. Uh, but what amazes me is it'll quit, and we'll pray and say, Lord, this is what we got right here. <laughs> we got to touch it or we won't be doing anything. Right. And he does. He touches it. And then right before the deal, it'll start working. And I didn't think it was going to come up this time, but I just kept praying, Lord, this has to come up so we can have this. And right. so here it did. It came up. So I tell you, prayer works. Amen. Amen. And. We thank the Lord for everything, even all we've been through. I tell you what, this is this last battle we've been through is more intense, I think, than anything we've ever been through, hardly. But <laughs> God brought us through it, and he's going to continue to bring us through, just like he will you that are the Lord's true people. Right. And so he knows what we all need. Right. He knows our hearts. He knows our thoughts. That's right. And... He knows every circumstance in our life. He does. And Amen. you know, this is this last verse of Psalm twenty seven fourteen, really. Wait on the Lord. And what does that mean? Expect. Right. As right. we wait, expect <laughs> to hear from the Lord. And while we're waiting and expecting, also be of good courage. Right, that's right. Amen. Amen. Don't be in despair. That's right. Hallelujah. Be of good courage. And be rejoicing in the Lord. Hallelujah. And what does he say? And he shall strengthen, strengthen thine heart. Our hearts. Hallelujah. And then he says again. Wait, wait. I say. I say. On the Lord. On the Lord. Hallelujah. Expect. Yes. Expect to hear the answer. God is so as good. As we are waiting. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord, he never fails us. He never fails his children. And one last bit, I'm going to remind you of the importance of the word, the importance of the Psalms. When Jesus, let me just read this before I pray. I'm going to go here to Luke chapter 24. And I'm just going to read one verse here, two verses here. Very important. We remember this. I meant to read it earlier, but I didn't. Hallelujah. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Amen? In all the scriptures. Now, the scriptures are important. The importance of the Psalms, the Psalms are so filled with praise and worship and the rebuke and history. And you go through there, when you get... You get in there in the, the history part, you see about how God's people were so rebellious against God and God chastised them and then he forgave them. You see what I'm saying? He chastised them and then he delivered them. He chastised them then he delivered them over and over again. It's a, it's a sign. You see, it's a, it's a word for us today. If you know you're not in the way God wants you to be today, you know it by your spirit, man, and the Holy Spirit's been convicting you in some way, you know you're in for trouble if you keep rebelling against God because the word says so. Amen? You reap what you sow. So what do you do? Repent. Repent and believe the truth and say, Lord, I turn back to you. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you for that word. Thank you for this whole word today, Lord. And thank you for your holy scriptures. Thank you for the psalms that you've recorded for us, Lord, and had written down for us by so many writers, Lord, and preserved for today. We need your word today, Lord, and the generation to come, Lord, a hundred years from now, if you tarry, Jesus, they will need your word just as much, and I know you will preserve it for them as well. We bless you, we praise you, and we thank you, God. Let the word soak in, Lord, and just and just penetrate every fiber of our being, O oh God. Hallelujah. Every fiber, O oh God. Search us and try us by your word, Lord. Divide us under between the joint and the marrow and the soul and the spirit of us. Reveal the thoughts, the intents, the motives of our heart, O oh God. Keep us walking in the way everlasting, the narrow way, Lord. 
And let us be looking unto you always, the author and the finisher of our faith, as you trample down the foe, the enemy of our souls, the devil under our feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. 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 You can contact us at the Kings Road 2000 at gmail.com. You can also download an MP3 of this broadcast and all the other broadcasts uh, on this link. And also on this link, there is the link to the blog, which will take you to the other three blogs there on the right side of that blog. And also, I said the YouTube channel, right? Yeah. Yeah, the YouTube channel there, there's a link there, Witness and Testimony on there. And then there's also links to the archived radio broadcast, Word for Today and Morning Devotional. And there's some on the Bible studies. So there's lots there. Hallelujah. <coughs> Our God is faithful. Let us never forget that. Let us praise Him and bless Him for it. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his holy face to shine upon you. The Lord our God lift up his holy countenance on you and grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you today. His name, authority, character, and dominion, his word be in and upon your life as you go forth conquering and to conquer and stomp down the enemy under your feet, those spiritual foes that come against you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.